Mm-hmm. Hey, Thumpers, welcome back to another day of Comic Con with Hyper RPG. Holy mother of mother of mother of God. It's been a fun, 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 fun day. Did y'all see that uh, Thor Ragnarok trailer? Well, click just right here. <laughs> All over the place, right here. We right here, right did here, right here, a right reaction there. to it. Uh, you loved the trailer. Uh, I thought it was great. It but was right great. now, we're great. talking about the Marvel Studios yeah. Panel. The Panel. From 5 30 to 7 p.m. tonight. A little, little, little delayed. A little you bit. You were there. I was there. I was the only bastard here who was able to get in. Unfortunately, I couldn't Unfortunately. get in. Yeah, it was real It sad, was sad really, thing. really tough. Uh, the panel did start late, but obviously, once the panel started, they brought out Chris Hardwick. Uh, well, they introduced Chris Hardwick. Eddie Ibrahim introduced Chris Hardwick, and instead of it cutting to Chris Hardwick, everything, all the lights go down, and we're introduced to a video, and it is Michael Pena and Paul Rudd God, sitting so at a happy. table, and, they're, so and, and it basically starts out with them saying, okay, so this is kind of what's been going on. And it, they spend five minutes recapping the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They start with Iron Man, they go all the way to Civil War, and they end on Spider-Man Homecoming. And there's some really great, like, so this is meant to be done in a way that it's outside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is in reality, basically, mm-hmm. because he's talking about Chris Evans they're and Captain America. In characters. They're just, not in yeah. character. They're yeah. Paul Rudd and Michael Pena. Yeah. And they're talking about, there's a one point where they're talking about uh, Chris Evans as Captain America and Paul Rudd holds up a photo of Chris <laughs> Evans as, as Johnny Storm for the <laughs> Fantastic Four movie. Uh, so they're making a whole bunch of references like that. They have pictures of Robert Downey Jr. Um, um, from his previous movies and making yeah. fun of his mustache. And they're talking about the shape of Iron Man's mustache and how it's really weird and awkward. And they keep holding up <laughs> pictures of him as Charlie Chaplin. Like, it's really, really, really funny. They mention Edward Norton's Hulk. And Paul Rudd's response to it is like, yeah, I never saw that one. And they yeah. just shut it off the side. And yeah. It's like really quick um, because of all the things that like Mark Ruffalo talks about Universal and stuff. But really, it's really funny. fun way to open the panel. And we find out at the very end, they are basically ending the that whole video on. So would you be interested in joining us in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And do they say and playing Janet Van Dyne or do they just say just joining us and joining us and playing Janet Van Dyne? Ooh. And then there's a there's a pause. And the camera flips to the other side, and it's Michelle Pfeiffer sitting there talking to them. So they officially announced Michelle Pfeiffer yeah. is joining Ant-Man and the Wasp as Janet Van Dyne, obviously the wife of Hank Pym, the mother of Hope Van Dyne. And uh, Evangeline Lilly makes a little cameo in it, and she starts Michelle Pfeiffer and her start talking about the suit. And she's like, you know, when I did Catwoman, make sure you, you let them know that they got to put a thing so you can you go to the bathroom yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and all that That's kind of stuff. Awesome. So it was a really, really fun way to open the panel. It's very similar to what they did last year. With uh, Thor Ragnarok, where yeah. they had uh, Thor, Thor and, and his roommate Daryl. His roommate Daryl. And, and that was something that Augie saw, and we didn't see. Exactly. I didn't see. Did you so see So now it? the tides have turned. No, yeah. we, we didn't get to see it until it was officially oh, released online. I still haven't seen something uh, yet. Yeah, well, you, you guys know. have seen some stuff. Maybe <laughs> next year will be Hector's time to shine. But, like, but that thing they put online like a month or two later. Yeah, I have a really so strong funny. feeling that in one or yeah. one month or so, like this will officially come out. Yeah. Um, it was a really, really cool way to introduce that Michelle Pfeiffer was going to be joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What a great person to pair up with Michael Douglas. Yes. Um, and obviously... I mean, just, just one of the greatest actors. Oh, the caliber is amazing. Uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is phenomenal, and I yeah. think that she is, frankly, underrated. I yes. think that one of the things that people and think about Michelle Pfeiffer... she hasn't been doing as much as I would like to see her in. Just like a Charlize Theron, people think of Michelle Pfeiffer as being stunningly beautiful, yes. which she is, but I don't think that they that they normally re- recall, like, she is such a good dramatic actor. Totally. She's amazing. She's really, Married really to great. the Mob is a, mm-hmm. f- a favorite of mine. I used to yeah. grow up watching that movie, and, you know, she's she's so good, and she's good at comedy, Yeah, and she's good at, you know, playing these really theatrical characters, And but she's just a really, really good actor, yeah, so, so that's exciting. It was really cool to have that, so it was great, too, because then we were treated to some concept art from Ant-Man Speaking and the Wasp. Speaking of costumes, And I was go. really surprised, because the movie comes out next year in July, but nobody had really mentioned it. It wasn't really on anybody's radar. I think people were really focused on Thor, Ragnarok, yes. Black Panther, and Avengers Infinity War, yeah. which we got. But I think it was a really nice, pleasant surprise that they actually talked about this movie and cool. they showed some stuff. Uh, we got to see a lot of concept art of the Wasp suit. Great. We got to see little previs, but there, and there was in there within that there was like one or two shots of actual like fully rendered scenes cool. or shots of her flying around in the suit, and the suit looked really really good. Cool. Uh, it looks like they maybe had modified it a little bit from Ant Man. Mm-hmm. The the ki- the colors seem to be a bit more vibrant, cool. um, so it really stands out. We see two shots of Ant Man or two or three shots, but one of them is him basically going from Ant Man size to regular size, and he basically like lifts a car off of himself. Oh great! And then in the second part he's giant man and he's in between two buildings and he like peeks around a corner oh, to look at oncoming traffic and then just slowly like 
does one of these numbers. Yeah. So it was really cool. That's really all they had. There was no no cast was there. Peyton Reed wasn't there. Okay. Um, and so who was the, talking about all this? Was uh, it, it was Feige? it was Kevin Feige right with on. Chris Hardwick. We're talking right about it. So speaking of Giant Man, yeah, huge casting announcement was made. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Larry Fishburne. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne was added to Ant Man and the Wasp, and he's playing Bill Foster, aka Goliath, aka mm-hmm. Black Goliath, yeah. aka Giant Man himself. Mm-hmm. Another version of Giant Man. Yeah. Um, what happened? What? How was that announcement made? Did they show any images or anything? All they all they showed when they announced him was they had a picture of Lawrence Fishburne. They had who he's playing, and that was it. They so didn't... like an image of of Goliath, like from the comic. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and Lawrence is... Fishburne himself, but no concept art of sure. the actual ver- character from the movie. Very cool. Uh, they confirmed the casting uh, for the character Jimmy Woo, uh, right Randall on. Park. Randall Park, awesome. Uh, so they confirmed that. Uh, there were a couple of other characters. Uh, also, uh, Walton Goggins is joining uh, mm-hmm. the cast as well. Um, so I, I think people were generally just excited to see anything from that movie. Walton or Walter? Walton. Walton. Goggins. I love that guy. He's great. Yeah, that he's Goggins great. guy is awesome. <laughs> he's in like every Western. He's like really, really good. But, yeah, yeah. So but it's, Lawrence Fisher, and I'm excited. Here's yeah. here's what I think I can deduce from just the casting. Mm-hmm. Michelle Pfeiffer, she is uh, uh, not around the same age as Michael Douglas, I don't think. There's no way. Michael Douglas is way older. I think they're about 10 to 15 years apart. 10 to 15 years apart. But I believe that with with Michelle Pfeiffer being the age that she is, I think they're going to have Janet Van Dyne have aged in real time when she was mm-hmm. in the microverse. Yes. Remember the theories that like, oh, if she got lost in 1987 and if somebody plucks her, you right. could cast an actress who's 30 years old mm-hmm. to be, you know, like just like as if the, the time in the microverse goes by like that. I right. have a feeling she's going to come out and it'll be like, Oh, I age in regular time so that, you know, Hope Van Dyne, Evangeline Lilly can mm-hmm. be the Wasp. Secondly, same thing with Lawrence Fishburne being Bill Foster. He's not going to be Goliath anymore, right. but I think we might get some flashbacks to Lawrence Fishburne working with Hank Pym back in the day. Mm-hmm. And that maybe back in the day he was Giant Man or Goliath for a hot minute. And yeah. I had a theory. I was telling Zach on the way, and Zach laughed. I'm really hoping that this means that they can pass the mantle, pass the torch of Giant Man mm-hmm. to Michael Pena's character. Oh. Because currently in Marvel Comics, Giant yeah. Man is a Latino guy. Yeah. He's a Latino guy who happens to be gay. He's got a boyfriend, but mm-hmm. he is Giant Man, whereas Scott Lang is still like Ant Man. Yeah. I think Ant Man can still go giant, but it's a thing of like, no, no, you're Giant Man. He's right, always right, kind right. of that sort of presence. So yeah. that would be. So much. That'd be fun. hilarious. And um, they have such good chemistry, and I think that's what would make yeah, it such a fun pairing. Absolutely. So Walton Goggins is playing Sonny Birch, mm-hmm. who uh, I don't know that well. I don't know that well. Um, in from the comic books, I honestly don't know who that is at all. Uh, deep in the Marvel mythos, he's the chairman of Cross Technologies. Okay, cool. Oh, very nice. All right, so he's just a he's just like a chairman guy. And then you have ooh a female ghost. This is really interesting. Normally, the ghost is a Marvel villain who's like a guy who can kind of phase through walls, and he's like an industrial saboteur. And is it an Iron Man villain, I think someone was mentioning? Mostly Iron Man. That's right. Mostly Iron Man. But now, big part of Thunderbolts. That's right. So now she is being played by Hannah John Kamen. Who I don't know what she's from. Is she from Game of Thrones? Great. I guess I gotta fucking watch Game of Thrones. That's where all these actors Everyone's come from, from Game of Thrones. Uh, but that's awesome. That's really great. Yeah, cool. and like they didn't really and they honestly like that's really the only thing they really focused on. They didn't really give us anything else other sure. than that. I think the biggest highlight was that intro, the Michelle Pfeiffer casting, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne, and It'll some of online. the concept art that they showed. Okay. Um all right. and they went through the Ant Man the Wasp, and then the next thing, Captain Marvel. They went through this stuff pretty fast. I think Kevin Feige was just trying to get to the highlights, which were Thor, Ragnarok, Black Panther. Um, Infinity War. Those, Black Panther and Thor, Ragnarok were really the focus of this thing. But I think they just didn't want to leave us hanging with no information. Cool. Especially because they had they never really came out and then officially announced the directors that were doing Captain Marvel until like a few days after it had been speculated who was doing it. Um, but, you know what's crazy? I'm just realizing a yeah. lot of new information, even from D23, yeah. Like a week ago. Exactly. Two weeks ago. That's yeah. crazy. This is a lot of new info. Yeah. D23 really only got focus on Black Panther, Thor, and Infinity, Infinity War. Yeah. That was and, really they're do- and they're doing the stuff two years out. Exactly. Captain- so what do we learn about Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel, we saw, we saw concept art of Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. It's got a little bit of Winter Soldier Captain America feel to it, okay. um, but it still very much is in line with the classic sort of red, blue, yellow mm-hmm. design of Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, then Kevin Feige dropped a couple bombs, the first of them being that the movie was going to be set in the 90s. Which is surprising. What? I was not. What? That was something that I was not expecting at okay. all. And I don't think anybody okay. was. He also did say that the rumors are true. Nick Fury will return. Uh, he won't be Patches McGee. He will be Two-Eyed Fury. Love it. Uh, and that's going to be. what's going to happen? 
This is, sounds stupid, yeah. but I think movie fans are going to dig it, and comic book fans too. Even though nobody it really cares about this in comic books, we're going to get the origin of why Nick Fury has one eye. Like it's oh, going to be in likely. this movie. A it's, scroll is going to shoot him, and then boom, and then that's speaking it. Speaking of scrolls, come on, come on. Speaking of scrolls, yeah, it's crazy. We've been talking about this for years. Fox and Marvel have had this really weird relationship where they've had co ownership of certain elements of the Marvel yes. universe, and it's scrolls not always explained to us, the audience. It's, it's not. not, you know, they don't sit us down and they go, "Okay, audience, listen. Here's what we share rights to. Yeah. Here's what we have rights to. Here's what we don't have rights to." So when we see the Watchers. In Guardians of the Galaxy right. Volume Two, we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Is there some sharing deal? Right. And James Gunn has to like, a, like, spill the beans and be like, no, actually, we've had the rights to the Watchers the whole right. time. We share it because they're kind of involved in both the Marvel Universe and right. Fantastic Four. And it's kind of the characters. same. It's kind of the same deal. With Quicksilver. Quicksilver, Quicksilver in the Scarlet X Men universe is Magneto's son. Yes. In the Avengers universe, he's not. Their mm-hmm. powers are sort of manifested from from other from other things. Instead mm-hmm. of being mutants, they're mm-hmm. they're more like. Special power. They're miracles. They're miracles. Okay. Um, so, All but right. yeah, they but they did announce that the scrolls are going to be the villains in this. That's uh, awesome. Which I don't know too much about the scrolls. They did show some concept art of those characters. Mm-hmm. They looked kind of Green Goblin esque from the original Spider Man movie. The, the the scrolls are basically invasion of the body snatchers. They're shapeshifters. They're shapeshifters. And I think that the fact that it's set in the 90s, but they're having this big cosmic villain, it still works because, again, in the 90s, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Mm -hmm. shit is still secret. It's not until Iron Man and the Avengers that people become aware of superheroes and aliens in this world. So Captain America is still sort of not a myth, but he's sort of this ancient folklore. He's frozen and basically died. Like like happened in World War II, but it was just a guy who was skilled. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was flying around shooting lasers out of his eyes. He was just a guy who was skilled, who was inspirational. He had a shield, a little bit of a cast but you know that's mm-hmm. what it was so you get to the 90s and i wonder if they're going to weave real world history i wonder if they're going to say like oh you know these regimes in the 90s that you're not aware of were brought down and they were infiltrated by scrolls who yeah. took high-ranking positions in the u.s government or these country's governments and what they were trying to do was a secret invasion mm-hmm. it's another comic book storyline that they might do one day but maybe so a couple things to pull from this right brie larson mm-hmm. captain marvel she's obviously going to appear in an avengers movie at some point yeah. now does that mean we're getting an, uh, another actress to play an older Captain Marvel in the present day. Does that mean that something happens to Captain Marvel, a la Ca- uh, Captain America, where she gets frozen from the 90s to now, whether in space or a suspended animation or something? Does this mean that her Cree DNA, her Cree infused DNA, will make it so that she just lives longer? Mm-hmm. And that's cool, but then you start to, start to get to the problem. Once you keep using Captain Marvel in movies past 2020, 2025, 2030, 2035, Brie Larson will eventually age like a normal human being does. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well then how did she not age from the 90s to now? But then she kind of starts aging. Right. Bunch of different things to pull. But I, I do believe that we're going to get a secretive sort of espionage style Earth-based thing. The fact that she's fighting with the scrolls, maybe she just leaves the planet. Because the scrolls, the Green Goblin-esque thing, they're these green characters with pointy ears and chins that have like Thanos like ridges yeah, on them. Yeah. But that's when they're in their regular form. They can also take the form of a of a Earth cow. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, it'll be secretive in the 1990s on Earth, and then she blasts off, and it's like the Kree scroll war. You know, she's she's affiliated with the Kree. Captain Marvel is a Kree-type character. They have an intergalactic war against the Skrulls. Usually also the Shi'ar, except Fox is doing the Shi'ar with X-Men and Dark Phoenix and all that other shit. So so that's what I think might happen. We might get a full-blown sort of intergalactic adventure part way into the movie i don't know so yeah, like, it can I'm, still work because i'm saying they're secretive villains Does and i'm looking i'm looking at the concept art and we'll have it on the screen for you guys but i'm looking at the concept art and it looks like it could mm. be taking place in some sort of alien definitely another planet yeah another planet these ships look very the alien scroll home world you know what this could also be maybe this is maybe this is a little far poor zach he fell asleep he's so tired i'll exp- okay great i'll explain to him later but the uh the illuminati storyline New Avengers Illuminati, where after the first Kree Scroll War happens near Earth on Earth, and a bunch of superheroes are involved, and they repel these alien forces from like messing with the Earth. That's what ha- this is a comic book storyline that happened in our world in the seventies. So what they did is Brian Michael Bendis wrote this story where he went back and showed a flashback where like right after that happened, uh, Iron Man, Black Bolt, Professor X, you know, Black Panther, all these characters formed the Illuminati, Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. and they were like, we need to talk about some shit. And one of the things they did is like, we need to show the scrolls they cannot fuck with Earth ever again. And yeah. you know what they do? They steal a fucking spaceship, go to the scroll homeworld just to fuck shit up. They just, <laughs> they crash Ram land. It. And, you know, and Iron Man has his old suit, because again, this is like back in the early days of Marvel. And they just show up and they get captured, but then they bust out because they're these characters. Yeah. 
And they basically proved to like the scroll overlord king or whatever, like, you don't mess with us. And so it was an effort to try to explain why after this intergalactic thing happened in Marvel Comics in the 70s, why it kind of didn't really happen for a while again. It was, I think it was a really clever way to kind of go back and sort of tell this flashback. Maybe that's what Captain Marvel's doing on her own. Mm -hmm. Maybe this thing happens on Earth and she blasts off and she's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to handle this. And she goes, and maybe she's gone yeah. for 30 years. You know, maybe she's yeah. gone for 20 years. I don't know. But Yeah, and that's the thing that people are kind of speculating, like, where has this character been in that time? And I think, uh, obviously, they will address it, but I yeah. think everything that you're talking about, there are... Various possibilities, and totally. we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I we still have two years to read some of those out. comics. I'm gonna let you borrow some shit. That's oh, good I'm stuff, down, man. I'm down. I'll, That's good I'll stuff. Read it. I'll read it. Okay. All um, right. We covered and we covered a lot of the Thor Ragnarok section uh, in the trailer reaction, um, but it was a really cool trailer. Really good energy. Taika Waititi was there. Chris Hemsworth, mm -hmm. cool. uh, Tom Hiddleston, Mark Ruffalo, Carl Urban, out. Kate Blanchett, uh, Carl Tessa Urban. Thompson. Yeah. They basically brought out everybody, and they were just having a really good time talking about the movie and the energy and how they obviously wanted to do something different than they had previously done, mm -hmm. uh, revealing little tidbits here and there. Uh, but most of that we've already covered in the trailer reaction. But look at this poster. Boom. <laughs> Brand cool new poster. poster. Pretty cool poster. And take it away. All right. Pretty cool. Uh, and then I think the takeaway from the Marvel panel for a lot of people was Black Panther. That's amazing. They brought out Ryan Coogler, Chadwick Boseman, Danae Guerrero, Lupita Nyong'o, Forrest Whitaker. Um, who else was there? Uh, 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 who am I forgetting? Oh, uh, amazing. Daniel Kaluuya yeah. from Get Out. Yeah, Daniel Kaluuya. Um, Danae Guerrero, did I already say that? Michael yep. B. Jordan was there. Yep. Obviously, Andy Circus was there. Wow. And the actress. No who, Martin Freeman. No Martin Freeman. Right and the actress who plays uh, Shuri. Shuri, yeah, I forgot her yes, name. Yes, I right. forget her cool. name. Cool. But it was a really cool panel. And they. The nice thing about Ryan Coogler talking about Black Panther, and we got a little taste of it last year when he came out and he said, I was the guy who was in the back of Hall H mm -hmm. just a few years ago. Now I'm up here talking about a movie that I'm making in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And he talked about once he was cat or once he was chosen to direct the movie, going back up to the north, uh, like north, um, like up in uh, SF area, Oakland, where he's from, he's from into and, that comic book store. Yeah, going to the comic book store and picking out comics that he would like. The same comic store he would go and pick up comic books when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking about going full circle, but the footage that they showed, which they're not putting up online yet, maybe they will at some point. Okay. Uh, it was really, really cool footage. It basically starts in this casino, which I think takes place in North Korea. Oh, maybe Zach. I don't know. Did you fall asleep? He was, yeah, he's asleep. Zach sleeping. Zach yeah, sleeping. I don't know. What? There's a casino in North Korea? Why I North think, Korea? I'm not sure exactly why, okay. uh, but it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that, that uh, Danae Guerrero's character, Lupita Nyong'o's character, and Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa are going there, and it looks like they're working with Mark, Martin Freeman's uh, Everett Ross to try to sort of... Stop Claw. Stop Claw. Claw. And he's kind of like on the black market, sort of handing off and selling oh, and trading vibranium. vibranium for diamonds. We don't know exactly why. He's got the prosthetic hand, which later on in the trailer opens up and he's shooting lasers out of it at T'Challa. It becomes a really crazy shit show. But cool. it was cool because you see these three characters, Lupita Nyong'o's, uh, Chadwick Boseman's, and Dene Guerrero's. They're really kind of scoping out the area. They've got earpieces. They're trying to figure you out kind of what like to do. It felt like Casino Royale. It felt like an Love espionage it. movie. It felt Love like it. certain parts of Casino Royale where Bond is trying to be really stealthy. Like they were trying to do the same thing. T'Challa is trying to stay hidden uh, from Klaus, so he doesn't recognize recognize them so you kind of get the sense that there has been some sort of a history between these two characters cool. and actually uh claw makes a remark uh to t'challa once they finally face off of how much he looks and is like his father t'chaka mm -hmm. uh and then all hell breaks loose in this scene Dene guerrera has this like bracelet that basically turns into a staff cool. and she starts wrecking shit we've I seen have one of those yeah, oh, we all have those. I mean, I have it in my back pocket. Um, it was basically basically like that, but Whoa. it was just like huge, like this long. Um, <sighs> there's this great fight sequence in this bar. T'Challa is the beating the shit out of people. Lupita Nyong'o's character and Dene Guerrero's character are beating the crap out I of people. It. Good fighting? Great fighting. Really, Very really cool. good. A lot of hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, the Dora Milaje obviously are using weaponry uh, and all kinds of Advanced, stuff. Yeah. Advanced weaponry. And then we go sort of into a montage sequence where we see a lot of cool stuff we see uh t'challa's throne room we see little things that maybe it looks like an armory and or it could be the lab where winter soldier was kind of frozen oh, uh, but we, we see, see winter soldier we don't see winter soldier he's in the movie he's not in the movie according to sebastian stan he's not in the movie really? yeah he revealed a d23 but we do get mm. to see some other black panther armor could be a lie could be a lie. But or we, maybe we might see him in Avengers Infinity. I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? Oh, yeah, that's fine. We'll get there, baby. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we get to see really cool Black Panther armor. 
Mm-hmm. We get some narration from Forrest Whitaker basically talking about the legacy of the Black Panther. Cool. Uh, we cool. get to see a little bit of an extension of some of those uh, fighting sequences that did, they were doing by the waterfall, nice. which is really cool. And Eric Killmonger makes a remark to T'Challa of like more or less having this envy towards the throne of Wakanda and telling T'Challa how this must just be so easy for him because everything's kind of been handed to him. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely trying to build that sort of tension between the two characters. And it's really interesting. I'm so curious if they're... T'Challa and Killmonger? And Killmonger, yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Really good tension. And I'm so curious because in the trailer, we see those two characters in that waterfall sort of doing this like training combat sequence. And then there's another shot where we see if T'Challa kind of coming back to Wakanda where he's just like... He's got this attitude yeah. of "I am the king," yeah, and I'm so, and I'm really wondering if if T'Challa feels like at a per, certain point in the movie he has to sort of earn that respect from the yeah. people of Wakanda yeah. or certain people of Wakanda. Uh, so I think that that was really cool to show that dynamic between those two characters. Okay. Uh, the highlight action sequence is when Ulysses Claw is actually escapes from the club, and he's being chased on foot by Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman is running down the street in a suit, just a regular suit. And as he's running, this Black Panther armor basically materializes over his body, Ooh. kind of like the Power Ranger suits do. Oh, it was inside of him all along. It was inside of him all along. Yeah, man. that's great. And I know people might think that's really cheesy, Morph. but once you see it on screen, I it is wait. really freaking impressive. Okay. So uh, it's like it taking looked, an Iron Man to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Really, really cool. But it just shows you kind of like the Wakandan technology and how advanced it is. Mm-hmm. It's even some of it could be even beyond what Tony Stark has. And I think that just shows the power of this nation, the power of these people and how and cool. why they've been so dedicated on trying to really keep, to keep it Wakanda secret, hidden. Keep it secure. Yeah. Exactly, which is why I think they are so hell-bent on really finding Claw and making sure that he doesn't release anything yeah, sacred. Yeah, the one that's like, it's all a front. Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. There's an awesome shot of Black Panther jumping from one car to another. He then jumps from one car to the side of a building and is running along the side of the building, jumps back onto another car, and then Dene Gura's character <clears throat> throws her spear... It lands in the ground, and the car hits it, and the basically T-bones the car, and the car goes spinning. That's how we end this wow. footage. And then it ends with a dun 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 with the logo. And like people in Hollywood lost it. Like it was yeah. it was very very exhilarating. It was really fun. It Is was it very a new fast. Trailer paced. or was it like a sizzle reel? It was like a sizzle reel you slash think we trailer. Some of that in the trailer, maybe I think okay. in the next trailer there's a good chance that they could open up that trailer with that scene yeah. in the casino. Um, but we did get a lot of like there was some real there was some dialogue stuff there was a lot of action mostly cool. um, but we got a really good sense sort of of the feeling of this movie and it seems like it's very much the feeling is it's sort of about legacy I would say um, especially because of the legacy of the Black Panther and what Black Panther's relationship was with T'Chaka yeah um, I think they're really going to lean into that it's a great way to lean into it because yeah. you know the last movie Captain America Civil War it had a shortcut yeah. to get T'Challa to get that role of the, right. you know, the throne. But um, it's the same thing that, like, Star Trek, J.J. Abrams, 2009, had Captain Kirk ascend to the captain's chair. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people watch it and then complain and are like, oh, you didn't earn it. So the next movie, for better or worse, they tried to address that by like, yeah. okay, we're going to strip this away. Now you got to earn it. Did it succeed? That's not what we're talking about. But it seems like that's what they're going to try to do yeah, in yeah. Black Panther, to, to go into some of those themes and, and, and the, explore some of that stuff mm-hmm. of father-son, yeah. those relationships, the dynamic. Yeah. Eric Killmonger being sort of jealous of that. I get it. That yeah. makes sense. It's really and speaking smart. of Eric Killmonger, because a lot of the footage moved really, really fast. Yeah. There's a shot in the trailer of Eric Killmonger where he has like the two weapons and he's posing. Yes. There's an extension of that shot. His clothes rip away what? and he has an armored suit too. It's got this like blue sheen with like gold accents on it, I think, as as far as I remember. Cool. But it looked badass. Like he's oh. fully armored. Then him and, and Black Panther are like fighting, falling down like a waterfall. Does he have that, is it like that Super Saiyan type costume that he had when he's kind of getting arrested or whatever? No, it's an actual like Black Ooh. Panther style like I love it. battle suit. It, it was really, really cool. Um All right, now let's talk about it. <laughs> you just want to get to this big thing. This is yes, I want to just uh, get to this big D twenty three tingled your about. jingles, didn't this it? This D twenty three tingled my jingles. This is Avengers and Infinity War, what do they show? And talk about why you think it's not going to show up on the internet. Well, it was interesting because they they obviously, just like in Marvel fashion, they end the panel. Uh, they're like, all right, guys, thank you so much for coming out here. Uh, Black Panther, you know, it's out next yeah, year. Yeah. The cast was on the stage, like, crying because they'd never seen oh, that trailer before. No. So it was like it was I a really that. cool, fun, emotional they moment. Took the, they took the selfie with Chris Hardwick, and I'm sure that they're, like, taking pictures and then leaving. Yeah, they're, they're, they're leaving, they're leaving, and then Kevin Feige walks off, and then he walks back on. Uh, he walks back on because out comes, because out comes uh, three of the Avengers: Thor, 
Hulk, oh, well, and Loki, I, I should say, uh-huh. they come out and they're like, you, th- you think we're going to come to Hall H and we're not going to bring anything from Avengers? And then like Joe Russo walks out and he's like, you guys want to see something from Infinity oh, War? Fuck. And then sure enough, they start playing this trailer from D23 and it starts with sort of a recap a mild recap of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Awesome. But then, you know, the first thing we cut to is the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, Finding Thor. Finding Thor. He, oh. he crashes into their windshield, and Rocket has a little bit of like, get him off, get him off, get him off. Uh, Mantis, pull, they pull him in. Mantis re- revives him, and he's yeah. like, who the hell are you guys? Uh, we get some, some various shots of them basically traveling to Earth on the Milano. Uh, and then it's really starts to just start being intercut into a lot of shots of like awesome. certain characters. We see Doctor Strange making these little floating walls walkways for star lord we see shots of iron man and spider man and doctor All strange fighting thanos not yet okay not yet but we see sort of the buildup of these characters we see scarlet witch we see vision vision is like in this cage it seems like he's locked up so i'm wondering if they are trying to keep him hidden because of the, the gem that Damn. he has so that like one of the most powerful avengers and they can't use him because he's also yeah. their greatest weakness yeah. to a certain extent if thanos gets him Exactly. Stone out. And you know he's gonna because he's, he's gotta make his to. glove. He's going to, he's going to. There's a really dope shot. It looks like we're on some sort of alien planet. It could be the scene that uh Tony Stark has the premonition where he sees all the Avengers dead. Yep. And it's really bright, bright daylight, and this portal opens and out steps out this nine, ten foot Thanos. Yeah, he's a big Josh boy. Brolin in his like his his summer collection. Yeah. <laughs> and he starts wrecking house. Oh man. He's like crushing Thor by the head like a grape. He's punching Iron Man, and Iron Man's just flying out into the middle of nowhere. I love it. He literally grabs the planet, crushes it, and then summons it towards the Avengers. Uh, Spider-Man is doing flips in the Iron Spider suit. Uh, We see Spider-Sense. We see the hairs on Mm -hmm. Spider-Man's arms go up, and then he reacts because he knows something is happening. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of really, really cool clips of the characters fighting Thanos. We see a little bit of the children of Thanos, not a whole lot. Uh, We don't see all the heroes. We don't see... There's certain characters that we don't see, like Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see War Machine. We have very brief glimpses of Falcon. Mm -hmm. We have very brief glimpses of Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. We see T'Challa and the Wakandan army behind him. Mm -hmm. We get to see Captain America in the beard and longer hair. Mm -hmm. We get to see Natasha Romanoff with the blonde hair. Mm -hmm. We get to see a little bit of Captain America fighting a a couple of aliens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it all basically kind of just culminates into this really big epic moment of Thanos and the Infinity Stones. He has two stones in the gauntlet and two of them sort of powering on. Yeah. And then we kind of end on this cliffhanger. Um, and and the crowd basically lost their shit. <laughs> they lost their shit. Um, but I think the reason why they're not going to put this footage online is because the movie has, does, still doesn't come out for another year. Mm-hmm. And the VFX in it were a little rough at times. There's some stuff with Iron Man's armor, the Iron Spider-Man himself. It looked really rough. I think they put online. They would be afraid of maybe being scrutinized for how it looks, that it would look pretty bad. Uh, and I'm kind of fine with it. You know, eventually if we get that footage, if it comes out at some point with like redone sort of visual effects, sure. or that becomes the first trailer, I think it will look really, really cool. Awesome. Uh, is there anything out of that description that really intrigued you other than Thanos throwing a planet at people? <laughs> the fact that he was crushing Hulk's head. Thor's That's like a Thor's great. Head. Oh, we didn't actually oh. we didn't actually get to see Hulk in the trailer. Oh. We see Bruce Banner standing okay. there with Wong, Doctor okay. Strange and and Tony Stark. Love it. But we don't Love get to it. see Hulk. So well, Power it's player. just, I, you know, there's so many questions, so many yeah. questions, but but you can confirm the thing that we heard from D23 is that Thanos is wrecking house. He is. And That's, it had, the tone was different too. And I mentioned this earlier. Yeah. You know, when you see James Gunn's sort of direction on Guardians of the Galaxy, it has this fun, uplifting tone. It's, it has a certain feel. Yes. And when you see the Rousseau brothers, and even in that one opening shot, when you see the Guardians of the Galaxy, it already immediately has a different tone. Yeah. It's got a bleaker, sort of darker tone. And not... Not in a sense where it doesn't feel like uh, like like the mo- other Marvel movies, but you can tell that there's this shift happening yeah. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where Thanos' presence itself has a really big sort of effect on how the wor- whole entire universe is yeah. sort of going to Can move forward. Not, and it's going to be interesting to see too because if Iron Man's permission comes comes to fruition, mm-hmm. how is that going to affect the fourth Avengers movie? Mm-hmm. Is that when they finally bring Captain Marvel as the big power hitter to really help take down Thanos? Are we finally going to have a vision there as well? So there's a lot of variables and a lot of questions. And this trailer, it delivers a lot of really good action, but it also does raise a lot of questions. If Thanos is this badass, and now he has the power of the Tesseract because there's a shot of Loki handing him the Tesseract, uh, what does this mean for the fourth Avengers? Who's going to die? Yeah. So many questions. (laughs) Uh, Is there any character that you could live with if they do get killed? 
there are some people, you know, obviously the speculation is maybe Captain America, maybe Iron Man. How like what's the longevity of these characters? I I could live with both of them, but I but I don't want it to be I just want there to be a moment where basically everybody's dead except for Cap. Mm -hmm. And Cap walks up to Thanos, that moment from Infinity Gauntlet back in 1990 or whatever, 1993. Like that moment where he's like, well, it's just you and me, mister. Like some, you know, some really (laughs) cheesy thing. Although I also would really like the idea that everybody dies and it's Iron Man putting the glove on being like, I finally learned, like I do in every movie, the solution is teamwork. And he wishes everybody back to life Mm -hmm. sort of a thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. Which characters I could be okay with them dying I think Iron Man just because he's been the face of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And it would it, it would make the most sense thematically or at least be the most impactful thematically if it mm-hmm. was Tony Stark that sacrificed himself that died and almost had a moment like Spider-Man. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I, I did it. I wasn't able to save Yinsen in the cave, but I saved my friends. That kind yeah. of thing, you know. That <laughs> might like that. I don't know. That might be great. Yeah. Yeah. But guys, we want to know what you guys thought about about this if you were in Hall H. Or if you found some sneaky, sneaky footage on Twitter, because it's out there. No, no, no. no, no. no. Uh, but let us know in the comments below how all this sounds to you guys. If you were in Hall H, what was the highlight moment for you? And uh, we're going to be covering a, a few more things at Comic-Con, but this is pretty much going to be wrapping up the really, really big stuff. Uh, I hope you had fun, bud, because it I was a crazy a weekend. I'm already crazy looking. Weekend. I'm like, where are we going for a party? Where are we going? <laughs> Got to look at it. Got to set all that stuff up. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Bye.